Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be giving an early look at the uh, week, I guess this is week 617 uh, slate of the NFL. And you could argue that this is the last real slate because in week 18, that's when they put all the scrubs in and you get these 3K running, running backs. And we're still going to play, but it's definitely going to be a different type of thing. But they're still offering a million dollars for first for this week 17. So we're going to take a look at it. And again, this is an early look, and the there's already injury news that is kind of in the offing, and we'll touch on it if, if, if I feel like it, but it's more important just to get an idea of who looks good at this kind of early juncture. Um, the other thing to remember is that the weather being what it is, there are only going to be a handful of games where the weather is is sort of acceptable, and those games are going to be the ones that stand out. Not that you have to play them, but you are probably going to see a decent uh, amount of gap between the top teams and the uh, the bottom teams with respect to at least my ratings, at least we'll, we'll get to them, but I actually have three teams that stand out over the others. And one of them is kind of has, 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 has issues that we'll talk about. And then after those three, there's kind of, I guess a, a, second tier of maybe four teams maybe and then it just kind of drops off so even though it's a full 13 game slate i think we're going to be focused on focusing on at least from a stack perspective one two three four five six seven probably seven teams okay and we'll get to them when we get to them uh first of all uh arizona against atlanta i don't have either of these teams being particularly viable as far as the stack goes it's a 40 point total Skill position guys are just kind of in and just kind of really poor in general. Both quarterbacks are pretty fishy. The one thing I would say is that um, there are two kind of individual plays. One is James Connor at 7,200. He's kind of in a list of maybe one, two, three, of about eight running backs that I'm kind of highlighting. And he is looking to be a really, really good play. I don't have him at the top, but I have him rated about fifth, but. Uh, nonetheless, I think James Conner looks uh, really strong. Uh, the other just kind of weird one-off I'm getting from this game is Drake London. At 4,900, he's just showing up as a really, really good point for dollar play. He could end up being really popular, but that's where I'm at with this game. Uh, this game, it's just really just a couple of one-offs, either either Conner uh, or Drake London. All right, so this is the game that kind of stands out uh, in that it's a 52.5 point total and it's a relatively decent spread. Um, it's 52.5 because it's, well, in part because Detroit garners a lot of offense and gives up a lot of it, and it's in the dome. Um, so Detroit is obviously gives up more points and scores more when they're in the dome, as you might imagine. So this is the game that does really stand out, and I have Detroit rated uh, number one. Um, as far as my sheets value score goes, I have them tied with one other team, which is uh, has as as a has kind of an issue with respect to game script, but we'll talk about that. Um, so the normal guys from Detroit are going to be in play and popular. That would be, I imagine, that would be J uh, Jared Goff and Amron St. Brown, and then you know you could uh, kind of screw around with the other receivers. I mean, I personally have DJ Shark as the next guy, and he's forty three hundred only. But, I mean, people are going to game log and they're going to see this, this freaking performance. Shane Zilstra with six targets and three touchdowns. Um, uh, probably not going to go there. But 2,800 is kind, of, it's, it's kind of weird to ignore, you know, because even though you know it's an outlier, the coaches see that the, the guy had three, three touchdowns, as did, as did Jared Goff. And he might get more, more run because of that. So don't just not play him because he scored the three touchdowns. Remember, coaches are human beings, you know, and they'll, they'll react to results just as well as anybody else will. So, uh, but there's also Josh Reynolds, who's just, I guess, kind of okay. Khalif Raymond hasn't really done much recently, but two games ago he had six targets, which certainly would be good enough. And a few games before that he had six targets, which would be good enough. So I think he could be a low-owned piece of this um, at 3,100. Uh DeAndre Swift, uh, what are you going to do about this? I mean, he looked really good last week, and he got three fantasy points. Um, boy, oh, boy. 
I might have to eat it and go back to it again, uh, especially if Jamal Williams is out. If Jamal Williams is out, you're just going to have to play DeAndre Swift, I think. If, if Jamal Williams is in, I still sort of think you're supposed to play DeAndre Swift. I mean, he's still the major. Listen, assuming this game is high scoring, You'd like to think that DeAndre Swift would get some some passing work, you know, if either either of them. But I don't know. This is a real this is a really dangerous play. But I do have Swift rated kind of number three overall points per dollar. Um, so proceed at your own risk and basically root for Jamal Williams to be out. I suppose. Uh, the other side of this, I mean, you have you have Justin Fields who just has the has a huge ceiling, um, and it's really good weather, obviously being in the dome. So. I think you can run some stats with Justin Fields. Um, now, some of the problem is that you don't know exactly who to stack him with, which why he doesn't show up as my as, as a viable stack. I mean, you could play Byron Pringle and Cole Komet. Those would be my two favorites, but it's it's really risky. But he has all this rushing upside, so if you want to play him by himself, I definitely think it's possible. Um, as a matter of fact, if you want to have some fun, you could play him by himself and run it back with the Detroit receivers. Like there, there, there are ways where Amon St. Brown gets, you know, gets a hundred yards and a touchdown and DJ shark gets a touchdown and yet still fields outscores uh, golf, right. With just fields is rushing upside and things like that. So um, I definitely think that fields is in play. He's not going to show up as a stack, but uh, in, in the absence of really, really just high upside guys this week, I mean, it's hard to ignore the ceiling that fields has displayed. Um, Jacksonville, Houston. This is the other one, which is kind of an easy one to play. I have Jacksonville rated as as, as number three overall as far as the stack goes. Um, and if, if you want to bump them up to number two uh, because of game script issues with a game coming up, we can we can we can talk about that. But um, uh, what you also have going for you this game, besides the, the normal, right? You have Trevor Lawrence with the normal receivers, that being Christian Kirk and Zay Jones and and, and the rebirth of Engr Evan Engram, like all those guys are in play. But you also have one of the top running back plays on the slate in in, in Travis Etienne. So um, I actually have Travis Etienne rated as the best overall running back on the slate um, with respect to, to point per dollar. So all these Jacksonville guys are in play. Now, Houston, you know, listen, they've been pesky. Uh, you have to admit it. But, you know, things happen to teams, you know, after they get pesky, you get pesky, they finally get that win which they did last week, uh, they might have a little bit of letdown this week. And Jacksonville's kind of, I don't know. I, I think Jacksonville could put up a number. And I think even though it's only a 40, 43 and a half point total, um, I think Jacksonville's probably my second favorite team. So that's that. And you can run Houston's, uh, you can run it back with, um, with, uh, with, with Aikens, tight ends. You can run it back with Cooks. These guys didn't do much last week, but they're still probably going to be the primary targets here. Mari Rogers even, but I prefer Cooks and Chris Moore. Um, I'm not going to go with either of these running backs this week, though. So I think this is a very, very easy stack to make. You make Lawrence with, well, it's easy in that you have plenty of options. I don't know exactly which ones you're going to hit, but all those receivers I mentioned, Kirk, Zay Jones, Evan Ingram, Travis Etienne, run it back with the with the with the Cooks and or Chris Moore. I think this is pretty easy. Uh the team I've been alluding to is Kansas City. They have the highest implied team total of anybody on the slate facing a team that just got obliterated. Um, so you'd like to think that, that KC is going to rate high and they do, you know, I have the, honestly, the Kelsey Juju Smith Schuster um, with Mahomes stack as being the second overall, you know, even including price on the slate. Um, I, I just don't know if them being a 14 point total is just kind of a 14 point favorite is kind of asking for trouble here. Uh, the game script very well might be this game is over at halftime and then they're just running it out. The, the, the other guy that you want to mention is, is, is Jerry McKinnon. I mean, guy just gets a touchdown every week. What are you going to do? Um, so if I were going to play Kansas city, it would be with, uh, with the normal guys with Kelsey or Schuster and, and, and or McKinnon. I'm not going to go for Kadarius Tony. He had one lucky running play. I, Valdez Scantling is like the worst. So I'm probably going to just be off of this game uh, as dangerous as that sounds. So, yeah. And I don't have it in me to go back to play Denver. Although I will say this, um, uh, the game script is good. 
And also the environment is good. They got rid of Hackett and teams always, always play well as well as they can for the new coach. Um, and uh, I would, I think that that's the lone thing you could do is, is play Wilson and Judy and Sutton. Um, wouldn't be the first time we've tried this to no effect specifically last week. But uh, I, I think that especially if you get the game script that you want and Denver being forced to, to pass the ball a lot, uh, I think that that's very reasonable. So uh, guys, we're looking at our Judy Sutton, uh, if Hinton comes back, we'll see what happens with him. Uh, and and Zolcich, we have to see if he plays. He was ruled out. Oh, he didn't play in the Rams game um, uh, after the fourth quarter. We'll see what happens if he comes back. But I do think Denver, you know, those guys still are very skillful, right, between Judy and, and Sutton. And the game script is very ripe to, you know, for fantasy points for on their side of it. So probably going to be under on Kansas City, probably a little bit over on Denver. Um, Miami and New England, I, I got nothing here. Uh, you probably have a back, you probably have Teddy Bridgewater from Miami. So I'm, I'm really not going to go play um, uh, the Miami receivers in that type of environment, especially going into cold New England and all that stuff. Uh, that Someone else can do that. Um on the New England side, I, I, Ramondre Stevenson, I have him as a as one of the strong running back plays. Um, I have him rated number two overall, so I do like that. So off of the Miami with the backup quarterback, probably, and I'll be on uh, Ramondre Stevenson from the uh, Indianapolis against uh, the Giants. This game is pretty much an overall pass for me. With the one exception of perhaps some uh, Saquon Barkley on the Giants side, the, the, the Colts are, are are very stingy defensively. Giants are not that great offensively. They do have still have those cheap receivers who will probably project to be kind of okay plays. Um, Slayton down to 4,900 actually. Hodgins, that was smart. They moved both these guys up a little bit, but I still think they're probably too cheap, but – I wouldn't expect all too much out of this game in general. So for me, maybe some Barkley, have him rated seventh overall. Um, that's pretty much it. Indianapolis, I mean, they have, I don't know what's going on with them. I mean, well, I mean, they tried Nick Foles. That was a disaster. I don't know what's going to happen this week. If anything, maybe you want to try a one-off of Alec Pierce. That would be the only thing I could come up with. Um, or Mo Alley Cox or the other tight end, the Jelani Walker. Those guys were getting most of the targets. Uh, New Orleans, Philly. I don't know exactly who's playing for Philly. Um, if Jalen Hurts is in, I, I'll probably end up playing him. Uh, again, there's not a lot of huge ceiling guys on the slate, and um, if in fact he gets the uh, he gets the uh, he gets the he gets the run, uh, I am not going to overthink it. I'm just going to play him, uh, and I'll play him with those receivers. I'll play him with uh, AJ Brown. I'll play him with. Devontae Smith, and we're just going to roll. Uh, you're going to hear that he, if he plays, he's not going to go full out or whatever. I'm, I'm not interested. Uh, if he plays, I'm playing all of the Philly. As a matter of fact, I might consider just playing that playing him anyway. And they're not really showing up as a particularly good stack for me. Um, I have them rated. Do I even have them rated? I probably don't have them rated because I don't even know what's playing. Yeah, I have them. I have them rated really low because I have Minshew playing, but something's wrong with these projections. I'm telling you, I, I, I'll probably end up with playing Philly here, uh, and I'm not gonna. I don't think I'm gonna do a run back with um, with uh, Amara. If anything, I would try Olave if he's back. Um, didn't play last week. Sixty one hundred is probably too expensive. Probably just play maybe a Philly onslaught or something like that. Let them go and clinch the division in fine style. Uh, Carolina and Tampa. Um, no thanks. I mean, two teams that really can't generate too much offense and two teams that are pretty okay defensively. I mean, you can make a case for for the, the PPR guys from Tampa, that being Leonard Fournette out of the backfield and, made, and, and Godwin. But I don't really see a huge ceiling out of that. And Carolina, you could always play DJ Moore. Um, but Tampa's good enough where I, I don't know. It's, Seems like 39 is a reasonable total here. And even though Tampa throws the ball more than everybody, it, they're, they're very, very sh – his ADOT is very, very short right now with, with Brady. So 
probably going to play this to be a low scoring game and probably be off of this. Um, okay. Cleveland, Washington. Here's another one, which is just kind of, uh, just, just, just kind of a dud for me. Um, again, it'll be cold, low scoring. You want to play maybe some Terry McLaurin? Fine. Um, he's only 6,100. I guess that makes sense. Cooper, 5,800. That's, that's, that's fine. Uh, but it, it's really not that exciting of a game. Okay, so San Francisco against Vegas. So now we have a team total of 25 and a half, which on this slate is pretty big. And you have Christian McCaffrey. And I have him rated as, what, like sixth overall? Um, uh, sixth overall on this slate, which certainly is, is fine. Um, but who do I have rated seventh? Oh, I, I'll get there. Um, so McCaffrey, very, very strong play. If you can get him in. Um I have San Francisco rated as kind of an okay stack as well. So if you want to play Brock Purdy with, say, Kittle and Brandon Ayuk, I think that makes sense. You could also play Jawan Jennings as kind of a lower own piece. All this pres presumes that – well, it doesn't all presume that Samuel's out, but it all helps if Samuel is out. So Samuel's in, then I guess Samuel's in play also. So – I actually do like Vegas to be able to uh, – San Diego, San Diego. San Francisco to be able to put up some points here. And all those guys I mentioned look strong. Um, on the Vegas side, yeah, I mean, San Francisco is very stingy. But the thing about the about Vegas is you know where all the all the, the work is coming from. It's going to all come from Josh Jacobs and, and Devontae Adams. So you want to take low and shots at them. Um, I mean, I'm not going to – kill you for it, especially with the positive game script, but just no one's been able to put up anything against San Francisco. So I'm probably going to let them beat me. Um, moving along, Jets, Seattle. Nothing for me offensively uh, as far as stacks go, but I do like both running backs here. I like um, uh, both Kenneth Walker for Seattle. And I also on the other side, like, like Zonovan Knight uh, for the Jets. Um, I don't think I'm going to get to much else. Uh, I, I, especially if Lockett is back, like if Lockett's doing, he says he's unclear. Uh, if he's out, then you could still make the case for Metcalf and Goodwin, but otherwise it's probably just a pass. I have Seattle rated, you know, like below Vegas, below T I mean, pretty much the same as Tampa. I guess if they're going to be low owned, I mean, I definitely have them ahead of guys like Atlanta and the Giants and New England, but uh, maybe this is not the worst idea. Maybe playing Seattle. They're at home. Um, they got a shot. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe Seattle could be a low on 4 p.m. Uh, hammer. Uh, but I do like both the running backs. Green Bay, Minnesota. Um, I do have Minnesota as, very, as one of the stronger plays. I have them just below, well, a little bit below Jacksonville. And above San Francisco, um, they they always seem to do it. <laughs> and Justin Jefferson, no matter how he starts the game, always seems to get thirty fantasy points. I don't know how he does it. Well, I know how he does it because he's the, probably the best, uh, probably the best, <laughs> the best receiver in football, or at least one of them. And I actually do have Green Bay as uh, as viable. Um, you have some injury news here. You have Aaron Jones, who's questionable. Um, so it's possible. I don't know. Maybe it was just, uh, I don't know what's going to happen here. His ankle was rolled up or something like that. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. If he's out, then yeah, AJ Dillon becomes kind of a lock at 5,800, but we have to watch for that. Uh, as far as the Seavers go on Green Bay, because I do like both sides of this game. I, I really want Watson to be available because I want to play him. Lazard has been pretty pretty trashy. Um, I prefer to play Watson, but if Watson's out, then you know all these guys become in play. Lazard and, and Dobbs primarily. So I think this is a pretty good game to stack. Uh, you can go right back to T.J. Hawkinson with his billion targets from last week. Go right back to Jefferson. I mean, until he doesn't get there, right? I mean, there was one game where maybe he didn't get there. No, he's over thirty points every game. I mean, what? what I mean, this is what you do. You know, just keep playing him. I guess. 
But I do think this game is, listen, Green Bay, is, it's not going to be the usual, like, zero degrees in Green Bay with the snow, whatever it is. The weather's going to be pretty balmy, actually. So I think uh, this could be a really, really good game to stack. Uh, Rams, Chargers. Um, I the Chargers is right in between San Francisco and Green Bay, so I think they're in play. Um, they, they've been sort of disappointing from a fantasy perspective, but nonetheless, they still have those – those three skill guys, man, you know, they still have Eckler and Allen and, and Mike Williams and, and Herbert, you know, he does still have the ability to throw it to them. So uh, I'll try that. I mean, the Rams, listen, they put up a really, really strong pride game this past week, obviously, but I think they're going to have a problem in this game. I think Chargers going to, you know, going to stick it to them a little bit. And on the Rams side, um, uh, tempting to play Mayfield. I mean, he's been great. You know, can I tell you? 2-2 Atwell, uh, that would be the guy I would play because he is he only had two targets last game as kind of chalk, but he was in for most of the plays. You know, they put him in motion. They did whatever. He's dropped the 3,600. I mean, if this is real, um, I, I, I will do that. And then tight end Higby finally had a good game after a, 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 a year of, of failing his chalk. Uh, congratulations to him. I guess I'll go back to him. So for me, uh, I don't think I could do a full Mayfield stack, but you want to do pieces like Higby. And for whatever reason, Atwell seems to seems to tickle my fancy, so to speak, uh, 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 as, as a cheapo, certainly in, in the late slate. Um, and I guess that's pretty much it. That's that's the early look for this uh, for this weekend. We will obviously have more content leading up to lock. And, oh, I will not be around for Bach because it is New Year's Day, and I will be with Mrs. Sheets. Um, so that is not going to happen. But uh, I will update projections as well as I could, and uh, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody.